Lord Buddha Shakyamuni came into this world approximately 2,500 years ago. At age 35, he reached enlightenment. Seven weeks later, he turned the wheel of Dharma for the first time at the Deer Park in Sarnat, India. The Deer Park at Sarnat is one of the most important places in Buddhism and can be said to be the birthplace of Buddhism, the place where the light of the Buddha's teachings first began to shine for all world beings. Buddha Shakyamuni gave his first teachings to five human students, 80,000 celestial beings, and many animals, including the deer of the Deer Park. His message of love, compassion, and nonviolence is a teaching for all sentient beings equally and without exception. As the Deer Park is so important to Buddhism, Many great masters, members of royal families, and numerous renowned scholars and teachers have gone to these areas to pay their respects. One of the greatest kings in India's history, Ashoka, came to the Deer Park around 260 BC. There he erected a 54-foot tall stone pillar topped with four lions facing the four directions. His name is Kempo Parvish and my name is Kempo Tsiru. So. Okay, we, we came from Tibet, in the eastern part of Tibet, which is known as Kham. And then we went to India, traveled the Indian direction, and in the path we had so many difficult troubles. Many times we were caught by the Chinese army and put in jails. And it went to so many hardships, almost the one center, every point, every point, almost we could close our eyes. Last year, I was asked to paint the mural for the Rinpoche's newly erected temple in South India. I spent six months stateside in preparation, creating and assembling over 100 line drawings of deities, lineage masters, famous monasteries, decorative borders, fauna and flora, and a myriad of symbolic oblations conven conventionally associated with Tibetan iconography. The planning stage entailed a series of meetings with the Rinpoches during which the sheer logistics of incorporating so much imagery within a limited amount of space was a major concern. Over the months, sketches and rough drawings were continually fine-tuned by the Rinpoches' discerning eyes. Finished drawings were redrawn to employ a different mudra, for example. Excessive detail would always be eliminated in favor of clarity. Images were shifted from one wall to the next. Retinues were increased or reduced according to the expanse or limitation of any given wall. A mudra is a positioning of a hand on a deity or a bodhisattva, which indicates to the viewer uh, a s specific meaning. For instance, there are positions which indicate to the viewer that the uh, image is teaching or is accepting a gift or is recognizing the earth. Once the final layout was established, we had turned our attention to the background. Mountains, rivers, waterfalls, valleys, clouds, Rainbows, forests, and open meadows would be included. I had the idea of creating a panorama effect wherein should the viewer stand dead center in the temple and the vista would be one continuous backdrop unrestrained by corners or doorways. I wanted viewers to feel transported. I wanted them to feel that once inside, they were no longer in India, but rather somewhere in Tibet. Although the style of the murals would be faithful to the ancient traditions, contemporary materials, acrylics, and other plastic-based mediums unavailable in India seemed like the best solution. I made one other concession to 20th century technology. 
Tibetan deities have very precise dimensions. In order to achieve these proportions, an artist must first grid his or her background. To speed up the process, I transferred all the line drawings to acetate sheets before leaving the United States. Once in India, I rented a gasoline-powered generator, hooked it to an overhead projector on a nine-foot tripod, and cast the pre-drawn images on the walls. My assistant, Tillman Branner, filled in base colors that would eventually be shaded into skies, mountains, clouds, etc. Local Hindu artisans assisted in the intricate border decorations running along the ceiling and cross beams. Twenty days into the project, two Tibetan artists from Kathmandu joined us. They had never seen acrylic paint before, but they took to the medium quite quickly. I should mention their names, Buddha Lama and Mindu Lama. Anyone who visits the temple will see the exquisite results of their meticulous brushstrokes. Tillman was painting a beautifully subdued tiger at the feet of Sasum Lingpa. Above the altar, Buddha Lama was straddling two precarious tables while painting the rainbow aura of Shakyamuni. High above us on a bamboo scaffolding, Ashoka was just finishing the golden roof of the Poto. It was as if the room had a life of its own, and every moment of the day, we all felt the presence of our orchestrators, the Rinpoche's. The temple is now completed by building a traditional monastic college in these beautiful environs. Our Rinpoche's have helped to keep those precious teachings alive. It is a monument to joyful effort. The Venerable Kenshin Paldan Shirab Rinpoche began the Deer Park Project for World Peace in order to build a monastic institute and retreat site. It is called the Nyingma Buddhist Dharma Chakra Center, where practitioners from around the world can come to study the ancient wisdom of the Buddha and the great Tibetan masters. The center is divided into several sections, the main temple dedicated to Buddha Shakyamuni, living quarters for monks and students, a kitchen, and a library with archives and study rooms for guests and permanent Sangha residents. Kenshin Paldin Rinpoche has assembled a collection of priceless ancient manuscripts and books for the college library. When we got in India, yeah. you know, we had kind of like two mixed feelings. First, we were very happy that we were able to come out of the, the, the chase troubles or the threatening. So we really kind of happy, joy. Now even we can see each other, even family died, or we can help it. At least we give some prayer as we do because it's very afraid we're happy. The second is very difficult. Today in India are very boring countries, but yet their customs systems are very different. Language is different, custom is different, climate, weather is very different. So when you just drop here, it's very difficult. At the same time, we are very poor. Poor, so every sanitation, everything, nothing, we don't have any what we are going to accept immediately without any knowledge. It's just a pretty much kind of really shocking, so very difficult. And then in the same time, time here I know something news. Also, whenever family members are sick, and also someone died on the road. And so it's very kind of difficult and very troubled. But yet, we feel happy that even if he died, even if he's troubled, at least we can see each other. So because always comes as a challenge. They say the spread of the family members, spread in your head and belief. All oh, that's very threatening to us. So this time, even we have difficulty and troubles, but yet we can kind of carry on our belief and our our and our practice, so that we are very happy because this is the land of the Buddha that often we read many times that in the tracks they go to India, not really been until we came here, so we feel kind of happy in that we are coming back to the land of the Buddha. During the 1950s, communist Chinese armies invaded and occupied the land of Tibet. Since then, Thousands of refugees have fled over the border into India. Some of them have found new homes in various countries of the world, 
where they are struggling to piece together productive lives. Many thousands still live in refugee camps in India. The culture and ancient traditions of the Tibetan people are threatened with extinction. Facilities are needed for schools and colleges to educate the young refugees. The Dalai Lama and many great lamas of the Tibetan Buddhist schools, along with other religious and secular leaders, are doing their best to continue this ancient, uniquely inherited culture and knowledge. The Deer Park Project for World Peace is an effort by Kenshin Paulden Shirab Rinpoche and Kempo Sewang Dongyal Rinpoche to establish a traditional monastic college, which they hope will preserve and cultivate the Dharma traditions and the Vajrayana teachings brought to Tibet by Guru Padmasambhava and other great Nyingma masters. So generally, generally Buddha's teaching has been very, very helpful throughout the generations, no matter whichever, whatever country you are, whatever the developed the situation you are, because the Buddha's teaching is the teachings on the love, compassion, wisdom, the egolessness, and share yourself to all the, or actually everyone, and bring everyone to the equal status with truth and honest and non violence So it's a very teaching for everyone. In particular, this teaching is very, very, I think also very important. I think it's great, really can help for to the Westerns because the Western countries now are, are very developed, highly developed and external rates. As much as you develop the external rate, that much, kind of you, many times you lost the inner stand, understanding your own will, your own dignity, your own self. And too much focus externally, so you kind of don't find out your own beings. So therefore, Buddhism teaching is that very spiritual that to really connect ourselves more inwardly. Maybe then connect both outside and inside in one single state, so not too much separated from each other. And then reveal your own love and kind and compassion. So it, therefore, I think it really has a great benefit to bring the balance more stable to ourselves both mentally, and physically, emotionally, and psychologically, I believe. And so therefore, I think it's very, very special. And then, then Buddhism teaching is very special. It teaches on love and compassion, kindness to each other. And that is everyone, not just only human beings, but all the sentient beings, all the living beings, had the similar wishes and similar thoughts. information about the Deer Park project for World Peace or other activities of the Padmasambhava Buddhist Center, right? The Padmasambhava Buddhist Center, PO Box 1533, Old Chelsea Station, New York, New York, 10011 USA, or telephone 212 683 4958.